Hello, my name is Mark and I'm the guy behind Your Strongest Year. Your Strongest Year is a new website released in December of 2016. The basis of which is we're going to release a new periodized strength routine every month of the year for the next year. The routine will be released on the 28th of every month. And the general idea is I want to produce a free program for people that isn't just like a four week program or a five week program or a six week program or a bench program or a squat program. It's a whole year of training that is designed to interlock with each other. So the first block is going to lead into the second block, which is going to lead into the third block, so on and so forward. Almost all elite level lifters and certainly all elite level athletes follow this kind of training regime. Uh, this is what periodization is. Periodization isn't running the same four week template over and over again. It isn't running the same one week template over and over again. It's running a structured program that delivers overload systematically, allows uh, times in the year for recovery and ultimately looks to produce gains, strength gains, fitness gains over a three month period, year period, four year period. That's where this is where block periodization and periodization comes from. So the program's aimed mainly at intermediate but also more advanced level lifters. So it's aimed at lifters who have maybe done starting strength maybe done some of the other beginner programs out there, maybe you've tried 531, maybe you've tried a few of the, the popular programs and found that your progress is good but maybe not as as quick as it maybe was when you were starting. So this is like a natural evolution for strength training or powerlifting for someone who maybe hasn't got the money or has maybe hasn't got the intent to maybe hire a coach, um, an online coach or maybe to or maybe someone who's maybe not quite in that position in their lifting career where they feel a need, like they need to hire someone else with expertise. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to release a resource for people where you can come on and you can actually, so if you start, you start in June and you can still follow a full year of periodized training. So although the, the program we're going to be talking about was released on the 28th of December and the information that goes along with it will release will be released over January 2016. If you're watching this in June 2017 or 2018, you can still you can still follow along the 12 month program. We would always advise you to start on block one though. So what we're gonna do in this video, we're just gonna briefly go through the block. We're gonna talk about how to use the calculator, what kind of maxes you should set, why you should map, why you should set them. And we're going to talk briefly through the four week cycle, how it's set together. And if you want to read more or you want to kind of delve in deeper, there'll be more supporting information up on yourstrongestyear.com. Uh, and block one's up there now with some more supporting information such as volume rules, etc. Okay, so let's look at the program. So this is the calculator. You can get this on, you can download this in an Excel file, which you can use with OpenOffice or Microsoft Excel. If you don't have either of these two um, spreadsheet softwares or equivalent, you can always use a Google Docs. All you need for Google Docs, if you click on the Google Doc file on the article, we're gonna file, make a copy, and then that will create a copy in your Google Drive. I get a lot of requests for some of the older templates that I created for the Cast Iron Strength blog back in like 2010, 2009, you got a lot of uh, access requests. That's not necessary, just hit make a copy. As long as you got a Google Drive account, you can access your own copy and edit it as you see fit. Okay, so what you'll see here from all the programs, we'll have a load calculator. Utilize the load calculator to work out your working weights for the block. What I would advise you here, we have our little blurb, do you want to enter in a recent training max or training heavy set? So this is either a load that is the heaviest you've lifted in the past six weeks, or you've done a powerlifting meet, or you've done a max session within the last six weeks, or for a max, it can maybe be a little bit older, like eight to 12 weeks, and still be relevant. What we say is maybe make it a little bit lighter to start with. So if you hit, for instance, say you did 260 for six on the squat, and but it was 
diabolical technique, we might, uh, I might um, advise, or I would advise you to maybe just undercook that by like 10, 20 pounds. So put in 240, 250, or kilos, 240, 250 kilos rather than 260 kilos. And um, if it was like, if your form broke down. So it, we want like the heaviest weight you can do with good form. So we're just gonna do a little demo here. So yeah, enter it, that's your We go in, weight lifted, so I'll just put in my own numbers. So we'll do 290 for one, for the competition. That should populate. And bench press within competition, 210 for one. And then deadlift in training, 310 for one. Okay, so now within the last six weeks, there's a weight I've completed. The program is now populated with my numbers, so I can cook in. You'll see here, we have an overview of the program. So this will give you an idea of like the volume and intensity. Total lifts are just the total number of the main lifts we do. So I don't count within this accessory lifts. I only count the main lifts. So this is, this program is going to be based around powerlifting. However, if you're training for general strength, it's still applicable. If you're a weightlifter, it's maybe not the program for you. And um, uh, so we have total lifts, which again, if we go into the actual program itself within session one, we're only counting in high bar squat, bench press and deadlift. These assistance lifts we're not counting because this is what we're programming on. These are the lifts that we're going to be concentrating on getting better on. These are the lifts that we're going to be looking to stress cyclically within the program. The contents of these have different. So for instance, the shoulder press, pull down supersets, a bit of general muscular conditioning. It's not necessarily something that I would worry too much about. So that's why we give general rep ranges. We give general guidelines. Um, we're not, although we want to stress it, we, this will chop a change within the program. So within the next block, this program, the dumbbell shoulder press might turn into high incline barbell press. It might change. We tend to cycle the stimulus on this. So we don't tend to pay so much attention on um, the programming of it, other than we'll do program for it. But we program for it on like a four week basis. Whereas for the, the squat, bench and deadlift, we will be programming for that on a, an annual basis, a 12 month basis. So that's why we pay attention to that. Average intensity, very simple measure. Basically, we just take an average of every set you do in the week. So for this session here, we have two sets of 50%, two sets of 55%, two sets of 60%. That gives us an average intensity of 55% for that workout. Very straightforward stuff. And this is what we basically use to give me, give you a gauge of what each week about, what each week is about, what they expect from each week. And uh, if you see like an average intensity of 82%, you know that's going to be a really heavy week in regards to the load. If you see total lifts of 450 to 500, you know there's going to be a lot of tonnage in that week. It's going to require a lot of muscular effort, You're probably going to get a lot of DOMs from that week. So these are the things to expect from the program. It's just, there's general guidelines within that. So we talk about the actual structure of the program. We're going for a three day a week um, approach for this block. We will go into four day programs later on. Uh, we're going for the three day a week program. So we're, we're trying to put in a large stimulus every time we train. So when we train, we're going to be doing a lot of reps, a lot of exercises. Uh, there's a fair bit of amount of variation. There's going to be a lot of DOMs within the program. And as such, we don't want to train day on, day on, day, uh, cause you won't be able to recover. The quality of your workouts will suffer. The quality of your execution will suffer. And as a result, the results you get for the program will suffer. So three days a week is more than enough. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. There's, there's times of the year when I train three days a week um, and I've been training for over a decade and I have reasonably good results within the lifts. I'm not, I'm, I'm not Tom Martin by any means, um, but I'm not weak either. So when we look at the actual program itself, you'll notice we went for the three lifts on day one and day three. So day one, day three, they're the harder sessions within the week. They're going to be the tougher sessions to get through. Day two is more of a variation day. It lets us put in different work. Uh, we can look at using within the squat, for instance, we can maybe look at using a different bar to challenge the skill in a different way. We can maybe look at a pause to work on the position from the bottom. We're just looking to add a bit of variety to what we're doing while still getting extra work, extra volume, which is gonna add up uh, over the course of the block. As far as exercise selection goes within this block, you'll see we're going for like a high bar box at back, high bar squat, 
rather than maybe a typical back squat or a, a low bar squat. Um, so the idea behind this is we want to actually go deep. So if you're a powerlifter or you've learned kind of the rip toe form or you've learned to squat in more of a powerlifting manner, for this block we like you take the bar up higher and actually go to deeper because we're trying to put in extra muscular work through this block. The intensity is going to be fairly low through most of the workouts so we want the volume the amount of volume to be high we want the amount of muscular effort to be high and as because we want the muscular effort to be high we want the range of motion of the joint to be high so within bench press if you typically use a massive arch i'd suggest that you maybe just do a normal bench press or even try flat back or feet up bench press although we don't specify that in the program and for deadlift just very little deadlifts fine and um, maybe an idea if you do sumo you can maybe look to do conventional deadlift on one day and sumo on the other day just again as extra range of motion, extra stimulus for the back and um, get, just get an extra work in. So you'll see session one, we're going for a very high volume, two sets of 10, two sets of 8, two sets of 6, giving us a total volume of 68 lifts in the workout which is a huge amount of lifts and 55% uh, relative intensity which is quite low. For the assistance, um, we typically just do like a push pull. So we'll train the planes that we don't train in, in the main lifts on this. So for pressing, we don't train uh, we don't train vertical or incline or decline. So we will train all of these within our assistance. We tend to stick to the compound lifts mainly just because we get more bang for our buck. There's nothing wrong with isolation movement, but we can get more out of our workout if we concentrate more on a compound exercise, multi-joint exercises, so that's what we tend to do. So you'll see we have a a vertical push, vertical pull down superset. We have reverse hyper, hyper superset. There are there are options for reverse hyper, hypers and hypers if you don't have access to GHB or reverse hyper in your gym. Something we'll cover off in one of the articles. Uh, and then face pull and reverse fly superset, just a bit of upper back work. We'll go to session two. You see here, again, sticking with a fairly common theme of higher volume work. So we're looking at three sets of 12, so 36 total lifts on the floor press or close grip bench. Typically what I would suggest is if, for most people, you probably want to use a close grip bench press, uh, again, just for that extra muscular work. If you do, uh, maybe if you find that you're quite strong off the chest, uh, and maybe you want to work on your lockout a bit more, or maybe your shoulders are a little bit more, more beat up or you're, or you're an older lifter, then maybe the, the floor press is a better option. For the Squat variation, safety bar squat is excellent if you have access to one. If not, you can do quad squat and get great benefit from that. Alternatively, you can also maybe look at using a front squat. And then penley row, we don't like, don't really like doing um, deadlift more than twice a week uh, for lifters that I don't coach in person. Uh, some of the lifters that I coach in person will deadlift three, maybe four times a week, but I can make sure that the form's good all the time. When I release a program out to tender for the public, I can also, I also sometimes find myself uh, wondering if two times a week deadlift is even a good thing. But we trust that if you're aware of who I am or you read my stuff, you'll know that I always preach good form and movement is king, always. Don't sacrifice your movement for weight ever, especially on this program because you will get chewed up. And you'll see again, go for the push-pull theme here. We have high incline dumbbell press, superset with a dumbbell chest support row. I'm a huge fan of chest supported work or supported work for back. because so I find when we do things like a barbell row or a H row, tendency is to cheat and use momentum. Whereas when we do something like a penalty row, it tends to be stricter, tends to be better quality of movement. Uh, you'll see we're just doing another simple uh, push pull superset. And again, some more upper back work and rotator cuff work, which we'll do a fair amount of. So session three, again, this is one of the harder sessions of the week. So session one and session three, like we mentioned beforehand, this is the harder day. Deadlift is the focus of this workout for the lower body, and you'll see squat is the focus of the workout on session one. So you'll see we'll have uh, more intensity in the workout, and we also have it uh, spread over different intensities. So we're lifting 50, 60, and 70% for an average intensity of 60%. 34 to the lifts, so four deadlift, that's a very high number of lifts as a high volume. The relative intensity of the deadlift, that's fairly standard for the bit of a program for most of my uh, programs. You also find on the programs that we tend to train bench with higher intensity, something I've found with my lifters, particularly last year and some lifters, um, 
that they respond better to higher intensity in the bench press, whereas they respond quite well to lower intensity in squat and deadlift, especially in deadlift. Squat can uh, be a mixture of both for some people. Uh, I personally don't really respond well to uh, lower intensity or higher intensity bench press. I find lower intensity volume really works well for me. But for the majority of people, I would say higher intensity on bench press, higher average intensity on bench press tends to work out really well. So you'll see that's a real tough workout, 54 total reps, an average of 75%. Um, and then box squat below parallel. Again, on the box squat, we'll maybe cover this off in one of our uh, tutorial videos. We're not doing the typical west side box squat or, or the box squat, which is designed for quick lifters. We're looking at doing just a straightforward, using as a depth guide. So sit down in a normal manner to your squat, just one inch below parallel, so just, just at a competition depth or a little bit deeper. And just touch and go. And uh, we do three sets of ten at that. So that'll be a real burner in the legs. And you'll see similar theme for the assistance work. And uh, push pull supersets with upper back work. And then if we just follow the theme, exercise remain the same through the cycle, all your main exercises. There's a little bit of variation here. So we Two and four are more of our intensity based workouts. So you'll see here our volume drops off, our average intensity goes up. So if we look at 68 total lifts versus 52. So we've dropped off 14 lifts, but the average intensity is up 15%. So that's kind of the, the theme of the workout or the theme of the block. And you'll find this theme when we get carried through probably in block two and three. And as we go on, we'll introduce different elements. But so we're just doing like a weekly undulation of intensity and volume. It's very straightforward. If we look at the graph, you'll see it's very apparent. So total list highest at the start, big drop off week two, raise up week three, and then it's the same drop off in volume on week four. And you'll see intensity just mirrors it. So when volume drops, intensity rises, so on and so forth. You'll see here, although there's a quite a large drop off in the total number of lifts on week three, because the intensity doesn't doesn't melt away so much, this is actually going to be a real tough week. So when we look at the program, we look at where the overload's coming from. Week one and week three, those are our overload weeks. Week two and week four are more of a recovery week. Uh, this is also more of a bridging week because we're going to go to more more of a higher average intensity uh, and not relying so much on such a high volume of lifts in block two. Okay. So that'll conclude this uh, intro video. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer, I plan on doing a few Q&A sessions on the program. So if you have any questions you'd like answered, please leave a comment below or shoot me a message on Facebook. If you'd rather speak to me on email, speedpowerperformance.gmail.com. Please check out yourstrongestyear.com. Like and subscribe to the channel, please. It really helps me grow it. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll be chatting to you soon about the program. Cheers. Bye.